off just a brief word about where I come from. I'm with a new organisation, UK Research Innovation. It came into being on the 1st of April this year and is an amalgamation of the UK's seven research councils plus two other bodies. And we're still feeling our way about what this new organisation means. Um, but basically, EPSRC is a public funding body, a bit like DFG. Um, we have a large portfolio of grants covering everything in the engineering and physical sciences. Um, the background to um, what we've been doing is that um, the ICT programme notices that we have very few women in the community. About 25% of the student population are female and about 18% of research staff. Um, ICT in the UK, as we define it in EPSRC, covers a range of fields from um, electronics and hardware through to software engineering and fundamental computer science with human computer interaction on the way. So it's quite a broad field. And actually getting to know what's going on is, is quite hard because statistics are not collected in the same way. Um, so we wanted to explore what was going on and we organised a discussion in 2016 which threw up a number of issues um, and also made clear that what we couldn't do was um, find a body like the Royal Society of Chemistry or something to, to undertake a, a study. Um, so it was put to us, well, you know, corporately you say you want to take the lead, so take the lead. So we commissioned a study from Napier University understanding the status of underrepresented groups in the information and communication technologies. And the reason for doing this is really to find out what's going on, what's behind the low numbers. And the inspiration for this study, I think, is the sorts of things that the Royal Society of Chemistry had done about 10 years ago, looking at why women were leaving chemistry. And the other reason for doing this, of course, is that we're dealing with scientists, and scientists like data. It's no good saying the numbers of women are too low because they'll come back with all sorts of things that say, oh, it's all the school's problem, isn't it? It's nothing to do with us. Um, so we commissioned the study, um, and the rest of the talk is actually going to speak about what we found. Um, it was an online survey, 186 responses, 520 recurrent staff, 300 postgraduates, um, 17 former staff, and 29 former postgraduates. Um, and Napier did 46 follow-up interviews, um, 43 of them with, with women. So they found a number of, um, well, they found that, as, the, as we've suspected, the number of women in academia is low. Um, women and those with a limiting disability were underrepresented. Men were twice as likely to be professors, and women were slightly more likely to be on a fixed term or teaching-only contract. Um, Napier grouped the findings under seven headings, um, motivations for pursuing an academic career, the working conditions that people found themselves in, confidence levels, caring responsibilities, discrimination including harassment, future career plans and diversity. So motivation, they found that people had two reasons for pursuing careers in ICT. Either they were interested in the technology or they were interested in what you could do with it. Now, this wasn't a male-female split, but predominantly more women were interested in what you could do with the technology rather than the technology itself. Now, that, of course, has implications for how you present the courses that you're, you want to run, how you advertise them, how you teach them. The working conditions were another barrier. Um, there's a history of a long hours culture which is exacerbated in IT by the fact that you're always on and so people send you emails and they expect you to answer them you know, at 10.30 at night or 1 o'clock in the morning or Sundays or weekends. Um, lots of competing responsibilities as others have touched on, so it's not just doing the research but there are all these good citizenship roles that women seem predominantly to be asked to take on. Um, and then there's this idea that if you take time off for caring or do other part-time or flexible working, it's detrimental to your career. Um, I'll skip the quotes, you can find them in the report if you like. Um, confidence. Generally, uh, Napier found that women were less confident in their abilities than men, uh, whether they were the researchers or, or the postgraduates. And I think the thing to remember about this is that confidence is not character trait. It's something that is learned. So this has implications for some of the harassment things later on. That if you're constantly demeaning somebody who has a low confidence, you're going to make them even worse. 
Now, obviously, the roots of confidence go back a long way, and it's not something you can necessarily fix, but it does have implications for how departments work with staff and how what kinds of support they give them. Diversity was important, with women saying that they were more likely to feel different within their departments. If you're in a minority, you can feel exposed and, and don't feel that you fit in. Um, and so there were, there were those issues that people found were a barrier and were discouraging. And again, it's sometimes it's not necessarily a feeling of outright hostility, but a feeling of being different or treated differently. Unfortunately, we did find significant levels of bullying and harassment. Um, we've done a look at other studies, and the numbers that we that were uncovered by NAFA are not unusual in the sense that they're similar to other levels in the UK. But obviously, any one incident is one too many, and it's something that we need to think about. Just a couple of examples of the things that people, people were reporting. Another aspect of this was, as I said, ICT covers a broad spread of disciplines from the sort of hardware technology end through to the softer hum human computer interaction. And there was a feeling that those kind of softer, more social science and psychology skills within ICT are not valued as much as the technology by some of the women's colleagues. There's also an issue around the indirect sexism and the, the difficulty in calling out minor incidents. You know, some of you in the UK will have come across this term, you know, oh, it's just banter. You know, these, these kind of low-level remarks that in themselves are probably not worth reporting, or at least people feel they're not worth reporting, but they add up, they, they accumulate. Um, I haven't got time to go into it now, but if, if anybody wants to Google the Petrie multiplier, uh, it's a piece of math done by a Dundee mathematician, which shows that if you assume that men and women are equally sexist, and if there are three times as many men as women in a, in a group, on average, the woman will receive nine times more insults than the average man, and for one woman, will get a lot more than that. The maths is all laid out. If you Google Petri Multiply, you'll see it, which shows that the banter isn't just banter. It just accumulates. And that's assuming that there's no ill feeling behind it. So, in summary, Napier felt that um, women were more likely to experience bullying and harassment. They were more likely to take part-time flexible working patterns, which then had career-limiting effects. Um, they were more likely to take on academic housework with citizenship roles at personal costs. They had lower confidence in their abilities. They felt different and there were different motivations for staying in and indeed for leaving careers. So, what are we going to do about it? I'll skip through those. Um, we didn't do this study alone. We had um, a partnership between the two major professional bodies in the UK, the British Computer Society and the IET. Uh, we also involved the Council for Professors and Heads of Computing, which is an organisation of heads of department of computing science in the UK and the UK Computing Research Committee, which despite its name is actually meant to represent the electronic side of IT as well as computing, and TechWorks, who are an industry body representing the electronics industry. So over the last year, we've been discussing Napier's findings and deciding what we can do about it as, as collectively and as individuals. And we've published an action plan, which you can find on our website, along with the full Napier report. And there are a number of things that we're going to do. The first is to try and establish a baseline against which to measure progress. Now, as I said, it's very hard to find official statistics because of the way they're collected in the UK. But universities do collect a lot of information, so we think there are probably figures out there that we can use. The next thing is that we want to organise a workshop involving academia, government, and our partners to try and identify and share examples of best practice and to work out from within the Napier's findings which are the key ones that we need to get to grips with first, what we need to tackle first. Now we do actually have uh, an application going through the system at the moment from a group of um, <coughs> academics wanting to support this work and if that gets funded then they will take that on. Um, but EPSRC has made the commitment that if that grant is not funded for some reason then we will do it ourselves. Um, 
we want to talk about case studies as well. Now, these are something that obviously lots of people do, but there's a tendency very often to say, oh, that's an interesting person. We'll write them up and put them on the website. Well, yeah, that's fair enough. You know, that might have some effect, but we think we can perhaps be a little bit more cleverer. So what sort of messages do we want to get out? Who do we want to say them to? And that might actually change the way in which you present them, how you publicise them, where you put them. So we're going to work with our partners, particularly the British Computer Society and IET, who already work in this space, to see what we can do collectively. And finally, working with our partners across the other research councils in UKRI, we're going to look at what's being done on tackling discrimination, harassment and aggression. We want to dig deeper into that, but we know that there's a lot of other work going on, so we don't want to um, sort of cut across that. But I think it's important uh, because, again, a lot of this is being done in institutions, but obviously some of those policies, good though they are on paper, are obviously failing some people. And if somebody doesn't have a trust in the system, they're not going to report why they don't have a trust in the system. So we think as a funding agency who are impartial, we can perhaps get at some of the reasons why people aren't using existing um, processes uh, and thus help institutions improve their own processes. So without criticising what people are doing, just to help share some, some examples of, um, and some, some best practice. Um, so over the coming months, we'll be collecting information on what our partners are doing in this area, um, so we can look for syn synergies and say developing smarter case studies, organising the meeting, and exploring this, this study. <laughs>